Getting a little starburst here. Real quick. Anyway, man. Let's get into it. Birdo Ortiz. Two bumps. Getting in the ring. We didn't request a fight. Um, boxing fans had already saw that fight a while back. And uh, we got out of it what we needed to get out of it. It was entertaining. You know, it was an exciting fight the first time around. And uh, it was a lot more on the line. Guys were fighting for belts and fighting for... Uh, to be next in line, you know, to get ready and fight Floyd Mayweather. So these guys were considered, you know, before Thurman and uh, Errol Spence and Danny Garcia, Adrian Broner, all of these guys start getting named. You know, it was all about Berto and Ortiz. And uh, Ortiz was, was for a minute looking like a dangerous fighter. You know, a few years ago, he looked like the guy that nobody wanted to mess with, you know, uh, when he got in there with Andre Berto. And, um, you know, it was knockdowns in that fight, and he ended up closing it out, sealed the deal. And he was next. He was next in line. I mean, could Floyd have picked somebody else? Yeah, he could have picked somebody else, but Ortiz was young. He was hungry looking. He was strong looking. He looked like he was really ready to be one of the top guys next to even a Canelo Alvarez. Like he looked like he was going to be a guy that was going to be promoted to be somebody that dangerous. But he quit on the stool before. Um, and everybody thought he was going to rebound back and gave him gave him a pass after that and said hey the guy's gonna rebound he'll he'll be back he's he's gonna look stronger than ever he's gonna be focused he's gonna be he's gonna be this and that but when i saw that floyd 24 7 um that one of those episodes that was on there and this guy took a day off to go fishing i'm like there's no way you got the the biggest fight in in the in the history of Ortiz, Victor Ortiz, and you go fishing. I mean, don't get me wrong. Take a break. You can take a break. You know, but to say that mentally, mentally, before a big fight, mentally, you weeks away, you know, from a big fight, and mentally, you're not there. You're, you're checking out. You're irritated. You're you're swallowed up by all of the the fame and the cameras and uh, you know even being the film being shot. You irritated with all of those things and you can't focus on your opponent. You know, as a boxer, you need to be able to zone things out. I mean, as an athlete, period, you gotta you gotta get in your own zone and you gotta be able to to fade everything else to black. You know, that's pretty much how how athletes do it, you know, I've been one, um, in my time, I, I still get out there and do a little bit, you know, run, run, I might do a few 5Ks, you know, some 10Ks, and, you know, I'm out of shape now, out of shape, as you guys can tell, you know, out of shape, man, you know, I gotta get in shape, but when I was competing, track and field, basketball, you know, I mean, zone everything out, you gotta zone out the crowd, you gotta zone out how you feeling, all of your fears, and, adrenaline and you know you got to find out how to use that stuff to your advantage you know and uh go out there and be great but anyway the fight didn't live up to expectations i mean we all knew that it was going to turn out to be almost the same as the first one guys get knocked down and what have you don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with knockdowns in the sport of boxing it's part of the sport guys get get hit get knocked down you know, uh, I'm not knocking that. It takes skill, a certain certain skill set to knock somebody down, you know. But that's not all that's required in the sport of boxing. And, I mean, that's good for the the casual fan. Casual fans, they just, 
They just want to see somebody get knocked out. You got two guys in a certain square circle with gloves on hitting each other. Then they want to they want to see some blood and they want to see somebody get knocked out. You know, excuse me. And um, that's just all it is to it. Us avid boxing fans, people that's been watching this stuff probably since the eighties and and further back. Like me, I've been watching since the eighties, man. Since I was a kid, I used to watch Ray Leonard and those guys on on regular TV, Hagler. Um, Tommy Hitman Hearns, Roberto Duran, you know, I watch these guys on TV. So, <clears throat> you know, the PBC thing is n is nothing new. I don't know why people think that that's new. We used to watch watch fights on uh, regular TV when I was a kid. Um, Pay-per-view didn't kick in until Mike Tyson got into the game and started knocking people out in four seconds and in one minute and all of that, you know, that type of stuff. And they had to start making Mike an, an attraction. So they had to start telling them, hey, man, you got to ease up off of these guys and go a few rounds with them before you knock them out, you know, so we could sell these fights. And those fights start hitting pay-per-view. He was like the first pay-per-view attraction ever, you know, from what I remember. Um, somebody might be out, somebody out there might be able to correct me. Um, you know your boxing history. You know, but I think that Mike was the first pay-per-view attraction. Um, or at least the one that was able to get on and sell millions or what have you. So, you know, uh, Ortiz and, and uh, uh, Birdo, man, I mean, 100% bums in the ring. Just didn't, didn't look good, you know. It, didn't make for a real entertaining fight. Hold on, guys. I'm at work. Uh, I got something to do. One second. Yep. So I'm back. But the fight. Ortiz fight. Berto fight. A joke. Guy quit. Again, this time not on his stool, but on, the, on his feet. And won't well, no more. You know what Berto was about to get ready and bring to him. So he quit. And this is why fans were throwing water bottles at him and throwing pizza, pizza boxes and throwing slices of pizza at this guy, you know, because they were mad that, and you got to understand, you in Cali, man, and the majority of the crowd is Latino. And these guys want to see a fight, man, you know. That's prevalent in their culture. They like to see knockouts. Like to see guys going to war. Tom and Jerry in each other. Getting in there. Tom and Jerry itchy and scratchy. You know, they want to see pow, boom. You know, three stooges type stuff. People getting knocked upside the head 24-7, man. That's what they want to see. So, he tried to give it to him a little bit, but he didn't want no more. And he quit, you know, doesn't have the heart of a warrior. That's what they say. So, wasn't good, man. But, you know, it didn't help promote um, Canelo and Khan for next, for this week. It didn't help promote it, you know. So, now we got to sit and wonder, is this fight going to live up to expectations? Um, or do, do we even have any expectations for this fight outside of Canelo winning, you know? Um, everybody's predicting it's going to be a knockout early in the fourth round or something like that. Me, um, I'm looking at Khan running. He's going to be running around. Now, if you want to talk about running, that guy's going to be on it. He's going to be jogging in that fight. You know, he's going to try to fight early, but when he feel, feel Canelo's power, he's going to be running. So I'm looking for him to, um, run for about five rounds and, he gonna have a hard time in between five and seven, and I'm looking for a knockout in between those rounds. So, other than that, man, um, I think he can pose a problem to Canelo. He could beat him if he box on points and stay on the outside and and slip and move. But we all know that guy uh, Khan doesn't really have good head movement. So anyway, I'm over my allotted time frame, man. And let me know who you guys going with this weekend. And um, I'll be making another video about Khan and Canelo, man. Peace.